Hello and welcome back. In this video, I want to discuss the relationship between the velocity of an object that is undergoing simple harmonic motion and the amplitude and frequency of that motion. Now recall that velocity is equal to the slope of the position versus time graph. So here I show the position of an object that is undergoing simple harmonic motion. We can see initially the slope of this graph is equal to zero, so this means my initial velocity is zero. After this point, we see that the position is decreasing, so I have a negative slope, which means I have a negative velocity. So initially it starts out at zero, the slope is slightly negative, becoming more and more negative. At this point right here, I have a maximum negative slope. After this point, the slope becomes less and less negative, and eventually at this point, the slope becomes zero again. So if I plot the velocity versus time, I might expect to see something that looks like this where this point right here, where I have a maximum negative velocity, corresponds to this point right here in the position versus time graph. And this point right here, where the velocity goes back to zero, corresponds to this point in the position versus time graph. Now after this point, the position begins to increase. And we can see I start out with a negative slope right here. I'm sorry, I start out with a zero slope right here, and the slope slowly becomes positive. It becomes more and more positive as this graph becomes steeper and steeper, and at this point, the graph is the steepest. I have the largest positive slope. Then after this point, the graph becomes less and less steep as the slope decreases, and eventually the slope becomes zero again. So at this point, I have a maximum positive velocity, and at this point, I have zero velocity again. So continuing to plot the velocity versus time, I expect to see something that looks like this. So looking at this graph, I would expect that if my position versus time is maybe something like amplitude times cosine of omega t, then the velocity versus time is going to maybe look something like minus the maximum velocity times the sine of omega t. So the question now is how does this maximum velocity relate to the amplitude and frequency of the motion? So let's first look at the frequency. Here on the left, I have the position versus time of some object that is undergoing simple harmonic motion with a very low frequency. And on the right, I have an object that is undergoing simple harmonic motion with the same amplitude, but at a much higher frequency. Now recall that velocity is equal to the slope of the position versus time graph. So we want to see how the maximum slopes of these two things relate. So looking right here, this is the point where I have a maximum slope for the low frequency graph, and over here, is a point where I have a maximum slope for the high frequency graph. And we can see that the high frequency graph is much steeper than the low frequency graph, meaning the maximum velocity when I have a higher frequency is a larger velocity than the maximum velocity when I have a low frequency. So we expect that the maximum velocity probably will be proportional to the angular frequency. That is, the higher the frequency, the larger the maximum velocity. So now we want to ask, how is the maximum velocity related to the amplitude? So again, I have two graphs here. On the left, I have the position versus time for an oscillator that has a very small amplitude. And on the right, I have the position versus time for an object that has the same frequency but a much larger amplitude. So at this point right here, I have a maximum velocity for this oscillator. And we can see I have a very uh, shallow graph. This is a very small slope. If I compare this to the large amplitude, we see that the slope right here is a much higher slope, a much greater slope. So this means the maximum velocity when I have a larger amplitude is bigger than the maximum velocity when I have an oscillator with a smaller amplitude. So the larger the amplitude, the larger the maximum velocity. So looking at this, I might expect that the maximum velocity is proportional to the amplitude. And in fact, we can see that the maximum velocity will be equal to amplitude times angular frequency. Now, I could go through all of the same arguments again using acceleration. Remember that acceleration is equal to the slope of velocity versus time. So I could draw the velocity versus time graph, and I could use that to draw a picture for the acceleration versus time graph, and I would get something that looks like this. And then again, I could go and do the same type of thing again. So I could say, well, my maximum acceleration is related to the maximum velocity like this. And then I can do one last step and say, well, the maximum velocity 
this thing is equal to amplitude times omega, so then I get the maximum acceleration will be equal to a omega squared. Now I should point out that both of these equations have the correct units, right? So maximum velocity is equal to a times omega. a has units of meters, omega is radians per second, which is really just units of ones divided by seconds. So here we have meters times unit list divided by seconds. So we get meters per second. The maximum acceleration is units of meters, units of omega squared. So we get meters per second squared. Now at this point, I should also point out that if you've taken calculus, we can actually show this in a much easier way. So if I say the position versus time is, let's say, a times sine of omega t, the velocity is just equal to the derivative of this. So the derivative of this would be a. The derivative of sine is cosine, but then I've got to take the derivative of the thing inside, right? That's chain rule. So the derivative of this argument inside is omega. So I have a times omega times cosine of omega t. So we can see the maximum value that this thing will achieve is a times omega. So v max is equal to a times omega. Similarly, I can find the acceleration by taking the derivative of the position, I'm sorry, the velocity versus time graph. So it's the same type of thing. I have to do chain rule, so I have to take the derivative of omega times t, so I get a omega squared, and the derivative of cosine is minus sine. So looking at this, we can see the maximum value that this will achieve is equal to a times omega squared. So at this point, I think I'd like to end this video, and in the next lecture, I'll use this relationship between the maximum acceleration and frequency and velocity to figure out how to calculate the frequency of a mass that is attached to a spring.